Part two of photographing your work, it's all about the camera. Now the last category we're gonna look at is the camera. What I use is a Canon T3i. My second camera is a Canon T6i. And there are many, many very good videos on these cameras or whatever camera you buy going through all the features of these. They're a little bit complicated. Now I'll show you a good close-up of this in the settings that I use. I use a manual setting. I don't use any of the automatic settings. Maybe the white balance, but I'll check that. Now I use the manual setting. There's just a number of different settings on this little wheel and every camera has uh, something similar. I use the manual setting and I, I have three settings within that category. First one I look at is the ISO. Now if you remember film speed from the old days when you bought your film and you bought either 100 or 400, whether you're taking pictures inside or outside, that's the, the ISO. If I'm outside, I change my ISO to 100 or 200, very low, because I got a lot of light. <clears throat> if I'm inside my shop here, I've usually got my camera set at, now I had to look on my camera here to see the different settings in the ISO. So we have auto, 100, 204, 800, 1600, 3200, and 6400. ISO. Now I'm going to take a time out here and look at my uh, flip out screen that I'm pointing to right now and we're going to take a look at first the ISO and here is an expanded screen of that and I'm just scrolling through the different options from auto to 6400 which is very fast and doesn't let in very much light. The 100 lets in the most light. And depending whether I am taking still pictures of my work or videos, I may change this ISO. Ordinarily when I'm taking pictures, I find a setting and that's good and I just leave it there. Now while I'm looking at this screen, I'm going to just uh, point to the speed of the camera, the 1 20th of a second, and you can adjust that and that just speeds up or slows down the aperture opening. The F10 to the right of that is the aperture opening, and you can adjust that in combination with the speed. Here's what ISO does, or that setting. It makes your camera more or less sensitive to light. So the lower the number, like 100 or 200, it's less sensitive, so you can go outside and take pictures. If you're inside where there's less light, the ISO number needs to be larger. Now, the professional photographers are gonna tell you, oh, you need to have a very low ISO even if you're inside. Okay, we're taking still pictures. I'm using a tripod. My camera isn't shaking around. Use your timer when you're taking pictures. I've got a two second countdown timer. I just punch the button and the camera is totally still. I don't need to have a real low ISO number. And I know there's guys out there that are gonna argue with that, but I set mine at 800 or 1600. Once in a great while, I'll go higher than that if I'm uh, making a video and I need more light, but usually about 800. If I'm taking still pictures, which really this is what is a still picture, we got a piece sitting there and we can control a lot of that with our camera. So it starts with the ISO. Now, the next setting is your aperture. That's the opening of the lens. And maybe sometimes you've seen inside of a lens, if you move that lens, uh, it gets real, real tiny. And you've seen inside that lens, and it gets real small or it gets big. It lets in less light. Now, the aperture opening is exactly that. It, uh, narrows down the opening or it widens it to let more light in or less light and that's the second setting so usually I'm around 5.6 on that aperture opening and if I need more light I uh, I just change that setting that's the, that's the second one now the third setting you're going to look at is the shutter speed 
well, I can go up to a second. Well, that's going to be all blurry and too much light. So I just uh, set the first two, the ISO and the aperture, and then I fine tune my settings with the shutter speed. And when I'm taking pictures like this, I'll take three pictures. I set all those settings up. I'll take the first one and then I change the shutter speed to a higher setting and a lower setting. And that lets in more light and less light. So I've got three settings for light on that picture. And if I take my computer out to my shop here and, and plug in my SD card, I can really get close to what I, what I want it to look like. All right. Um, it's not that complicated. You just need to practice, take some pictures and mess around with the settings. And I'll show you some, some close-ups of where you can find those on your camera. Not that difficult. Um, I've tried to use different automatic settings on my camera and I don't get good results. That's the bottom line without belaboring that point. Now, <clears throat> I've talked about white balance. You need to set that. You need to check the white balance. Um, I never use a flash and I think most professional photographers are going to tell you don't use a flash unless you... Coco! Sorry about that. ISO, shutter speed, aperture, white balance. Those are the four settings I would really familiarize myself with when taking pictures. I'm not talking about a smartphone. I'm talking about a DSLR camera. with interchangeable lenses, which is really nice. I've got some uh, lenses. In fact, this lens right here is a fixed lens. It is a uh, 16 millimeter lens. And what that means is one fixed lens will take pictures at a certain focal length. And I've got one at 55 and I've got some adjustable ones. The one I use to take my pictures with is the one I'm taking this video with right now. It's a uh, uh, 18 to 55 millimeter standard zoom lens. And that allows me to just zoom in on my pieces and go from there. Now, a word about editing. I try very hard not to edit my pictures in my computer. I may crop them a little bit. Let's say I'm sending pictures into uh, the AW Fundamentals website and I'm taking pictures for that. Um, I'm taking them at a very high resolution. You set that in your camera. And I take them in such a way that I don't have to crop them. I can do the cropping with my zoom lens on my camera. Now, why, why is that important? Well, the less editing you do, the more accurate your pictures are. If you start messing around with the light, making it lighter or darker, zooming in, cropping, and all those kind of things, you mess up, number one, the resolution. It changes the resolution. So these are 24 megapixel cameras. And if I've got that set and I start editing a bunch, it lowers the resolution. So that's very important. <clears throat> no flash. I never use a flash. These cameras have a flash attachment that pops up. And to be honest, I don't even know how to, how to get to it. Anyway, so I don't use a flash and what the flash is going to do, it's going to put more light into your picture. It's going to make it too contrasting. It's going to make it harsh and it's going to have glare coming back at you. So I don't use a flash and I recommend you learn how to do the individual settings on your camera without doing a flash. Take some shots, take some practice shots. It's easy to do with this kind of uh, technology. It's digital it's just on a SD card and you can erase it. Mess around, you'll be surprised how good a picture you can take. So anyway, I hope that helped. I'm going to give you some close-ups of the different settings and at the very end of this video I'm going to put up some pictures I've already taken for different projects. Let me mention one more thing and that is setting the resolution for your camera. When you're taking pictures, and I'm going to just open this up here so I can see it. Now, I'm going to talk just a second about resolution. Well, what does that mean? If you have an 18 megapixel camera and you have it set at 18 megapixels, 
that's the highest resolution. In other words, when you take that picture and copy it to an SD card, it's a file. It's just a computer file, and the larger the megapixels you have, the larger that file size is. Now, if you're sending an email, you may only need, and I'm looking at the inside of my camera here at the settings because I can't remember them all, um, you may only need a 0.3 megapixel if you're emailing. If I'm taking a magazine article, I'm going up to, in this camera, it's 18 megapixels, which means the file size is 5,184 megapixels in one direction, 3456 in another direction. Now, if I'm taking pictures from my website, I take them at 4.5 megapixels. And here's the reason for that. If I've got a picture of one of my pieces, and, and this is how big it is, so if I click on that and it comes up on my website, the larger the file size or the larger the megapixels, the longer it takes to bring that picture up. And you've probably seen that someplace on the internet. You click on something and it just takes forever for that to load. Well, that has to do with resolution and the file size. So you don't always need an enormous megapixel setting on your camera. You might get by with, uh, with 4.5 or 8 or something like that. When I'm taking pictures, I always take them, that camera right there that, that is looking at me, is a 24 megapixel setting and I always use that. I can lower the resolution in my computer, but if I take it too low, I can't raise it. That's the way that kind of works. So I hope this helps a little bit. If you have any questions, contact me. I'd love to try to help you. This is a big topic, but it's necessary when we're taking pictures of our work. Uh, do nothing but document what you've done over the last 5, 10, 15 years, and you go back and it'll be a pleasure to look at that stuff. So thank you very much for tuning in again. I'll talk to you next time. Now this is by no means a comprehensive tutorial on DSLR cameras. You may have a Canon, a Nikon, a Sony, or another kind of DSLR camera. And if you search YouTube, you will no doubt find many, many videos that are tutorials on how to operate your camera. And I just didn't want to try to duplicate what's already out there. There's some really, really good stuff on every kind of camera that you can buy. So I hope this is helpful, but um, it's just a, a quick snapshot, if you will, of the way I do things. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot for watching.